Hello, today is November 18th, 2021, and the time is 1.09 p.m. I'm going to be talking about three topics today. Each topic segues into the other, and two of the topics are actually inspired by two different people. So I'm going to begin by talking about a video that I have watched earlier today. It, was, it ended up being a live stream. I wasn't aware that it was a live stream. Normally, I don't watch videos, especially live streams, because I have to watch my data. But I ended up uh, watching it. It wasn't very long. And the video was of a lady sitting inside of her vehicle, waiting for it to be repossessed. And the emotions that she was going through, it crushed me inside. I really, I can't even put it to words. I felt so bad for her. And I did comment and, and stuff. And I, and I guess uh, she did videos in her vehicle for whatever reason. And she was saying that was her last video in that vehicle. It's heartbreaking. And there's her and her husband's situation is because of current worldwide events and if I remember correctly she was saying something about last year they they lost some property in, in the home or something so um, not they have a home I guess now but whatever they had before they lost last year so they went through some losses and it's um, to see someone else go through that I've shared videos of as a descriptive very low moments over the years and you know when you watch yourself like I don't watch my own videos to be honest but you know you you're editing them or making sure everything is good you, can, you gotta watch it but it's like yeah okay yeah but to see someone else go through that it's like Wow. So all I can say to this person, if they're watching, endure and survive another year, year and a half. Be strong. And I'm going to talk about uh, the second topic, kind of about a sequence of, of everything, but this really doesn't matter. And before I forget, I would like to say that somebody had got me a new coat. It's right here. You can see it. Uh, it's not new, um, but new to me. And uh, I'm thankful to have it. I'd like to thank that person very much for a new coat. So that's one of my problems down so when I'm out in the bush I uh, I can keep warm and, and this thing can finally get retired and there's actually I've noticed here I don't know if you can see it in the video but there's uh, kind of melted you know from working with the fire and stuff so I have a new coat for the bush the wilderness the outback call it what you want now it was um, within driving distance of uh, where I was, so uh, didn't have to get it mailed or anything, which is good. So as I'm sitting here at a gas station, I got here on fumes. I was able to get a quarter of a tank of gas, so I'm just sitting here waiting now. I can't really go far in a quarter tank of gas uh, to do this video and share these thoughts with you. So I was talking to this person about helping people. Now believe it or not, there was a time when my life was great. And a lot of you, especially newcomers to my channel, would never 
never knew me when my life was great. I wouldn't have been doing videos to about anything. So, and I, when my life was fantastic, I was on you know top of the world, climbing the ladders, and being groomed with the elites or whatever. I did volunteer and with food drives and uh, different organizations and doing Christmas uh, stuff and everything else. And I remember dealing with people that are in my situation and even outside of doing anything formal, I would always try to help people as best as I can in different ways. And one of the things I never realized until I was in this situation is when you're trying to help someone, you help them, like when your life is good and you're try trying to help someone, or your life is doing better than them, you, you help them as you think they need help. I was guilty of that myself. And when I was talking to this person that had given me the coat, we were talking about this, and by the only means, this is a diss to anyone, because again, I was there too. You tend to want to help someone as you think they need help. And I'm pretty sure, because I've done this, where you kind of envisioned, you know, a happy, end, a happy ending of sorts, or you picture how it's going to play out. And if it doesn't go as you're wanting it to, or whatever, then there's a bit of disappointment. And when my life was good helping people, you know, I, you know, you kind of have this, not that you're daydreaming, but you have this vision in your head. And you kind of realize, well, you help someone and whatever. It didn't turn out quite the way you would have imagined it. And you kind of blame them. But what I realize now being on the receiving end and being where I am now is helping people with how they need help. Now, there are obviously exceptions. I'm completely generalizing here because sometimes people get, their emotions are so low they can't think clearly. Or maybe even sometimes for some people, drugs, alcohol, or something, or they have some uh, emotional trauma that that's affecting their perceptions. Okay, you have to take those extra steps to reach through and pull them out of that. But generally speaking, help people the way they need help, not the way you envision it, because they know their situation better and they know whatever strengths and weaknesses that's in their life and what how they can work with it. So I just wanted to give throw that out there because again, before my life now, I did the same thing, you know, but it's, I think that's part of human nature. And that's the caring side of people because you really want somebody to get out of a situation, whether it's a situation like mine, a situation like that lady that had her vehicle repossessed, or even if it's just somebody going through what I would call first world problems, you, you help people as they need help, not how you envision it. It's just something to think about, something you know, a lot of people don't realize. So this now segues Combining both my uh, first point and, and what I just finished talking about, I've been telling people to survive, to endure and survive another year, year and a half. That's great. And it's not going to be easy ride. Losing everything. That's the hardest part. And, that, and that's the, the trap. Is putting that fear into people. Not to... Uh, stand by what they know is right. The threat's very real. But what I want to talk about is 
what you will go through when you start to lose everything because you're standing up for, for example, truth, justice, what you know is right. Okay. And I've, in some of my comments and posts and stuff, and I might have kind of mentioned this in, in a video or two last year, a lot of people romanticize who they are their role and how things are going to play out now you see we have this romanticizing of whether it be helping someone else or what they're going to do and i've used the example i'm trying to try to be brief here imagine a scenario you're standing up to tyranny injustice or whatever pick a topic even relate that to current worldwide events. And everyone around you as a descriptive is against you. And you have authoritative bodies coming down on you. You're arrested. You're wrongfully arrested, unjustly tried, and wrongfully convicted. You're alone, you're standing alone. And this is where strength of character comes in. This is what I keep telling people. You need to have a strong character to endure. You've lost everything. You're cold, you're hungry, you're even begging for water. You want to shower, you want to feel clean. You're living hour to hour, hand to mouth, literally. In the world around you, not to say the whole world's against you, but the world around you is just dumping everything on you. And I remember having that as a comment, and some people, oh, that's a great exaggeration. And I, I came back saying, I just gave a firsthand experience, and I'm living in the aftermath of my efforts of whistleblowing and exposing sexual abuse, sex trafficking of vulnerable women, and police, judicial and political corruption, and other things that I've shared. First-hand knowledge. I'm living in the aftermath. And everything that I, I, in the comment, wrote out is based on what happened to me. So it's not an exaggeration. And it's happening to different people throughout history and now. And it will happen to different degrees in different ways. Losing everything. And this is what people need to prepare for. Not some make-believe nonsense of trying to rely on on a justice system that's so corrupt self-serving we have and it's not exa an exaggeration more than 60 percent of people convicted of anything being innocent and actually the source that i got this from directly and I'm putting aside my own experiences uh, with law, working in it, it was, they were actually like 70%. So I'm actually bringing that number down. I say anywhere from 50 to 60, more than 50 to 60%. Because I can't remember the exact numbers. So people are trying to, they're setting themselves up. And I've said this in other videos where even online social media groups are designed for several different things to track people to find out who's who and you have these liberal arts the theoretical pseudoscience of psychology so-called professionals in there you know trying to scoop up new clients because they realize that there's a lot of people in distress right now and all this other stuff but it's really all these petitions and everything else just they're designed to to break people down individually and as a group now one of the things that I've been thinking about that I would like to share is what it's like to lose everything, to see that bridge on the train tracks not there and there's nothing you can do about it and you're heading right for it and what it's like inside and what to expect. This will help people. Now, again, 
I don't want to be right. But we see this with this 100-year pattern that I've been talking about that happens within the cycles of civilization. There's no stopping it. The smart people are going to prepare for the worst. Because anything above that is gravy. When you're watching, knowing your life is going to spiral, it's traumatic. It's a shock and awe. I went through it. I went through it years ago. Based on my efforts. It's hard. You can't sleep. You're, you're constantly having your, 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 like your, your stomach's in knots. And the longer that continues, being bombarded with, say for example, in my case, injustice and blatant injustice, everything else, it starts to wear you down, but you still got to push forward. You still got to function in, in society as best as you can, wherever you can nowadays, I guess. So you're going to be going through a lot of heavy emotions, and that's where I see a lot of people online right now dealing with those that shock and awe. They can't believe it. They don't want to believe it, and that's why they're grasping at anything, and that's why a lot of people still want to ignore me. They want to call me names, they want to do all these things because deep down inside they know I'm right. And everything that I've said last year in, in videos trying to help people has come true. And more and more people are starting to realize that I don't want to be right about any of this. But it's the reality we are at. So you're losing everything and you start to see everything that you own. How much, well, regardless of how much it is, just go out the window. And you're realizing things are going to get worse. So it's that constant shock and awe that you have to overcome. You cannot afford in the warfare of attrition to let your emotions take over. You have to keep cool. You have to keep calm. Look, listen, evaluate, think. And if you're fortunate to have someone in your life, husband, wife, family, children, whatever, that are of like mind, someone that you lean on, great. Now you're in a situation where, say you're fortunate enough to have a vehicle to live out of. That in itself is traumatic. But you have that comfort and you have to look, you have to look at it as I have something. It's that vehicle is your anchor now. So where your home and all your stuff and your toys and everything that you've had, those were your anchor. You don't have that anymore. You have one anchor. So you start to simplify and you have to start thinking simply. Uh, what do they call it? Minimalist. You're actually going to find once you lose everything, there's a, there's a silver lining to this. Once you do lose everything, stuff, uh, you, the career that you worked hard at, your reputation, whatever, it's actually very liberating. You feel this huge artificial weight lift the doctor's shoulder. You're going to feel that soon after you get over the shock and awe of everything and you start to accept reality as it is. And that weight that's lifted off your shoulder because now you're not bound to anything is great. So enjoy that moment or that moments after when you come to realize you're actually free. But now you're dealing with trying to survive you have to, like me, worry about gas, heat, now that it's winter time, food, supplies. Make sure the few bills that you have, like, you know, your phone and auto insurance and everything, it's all covered. So now you're dealing with that stress, but it's a simplified stress. It's basic. As stressful as that is, 
you don't have the other burdens that you had when you had everything. So there is a silver lining to this. And if you're going to take anything from this, aside from preparing for the worst, and that shock and awe and the trauma that goes along with it, another part of hope along with enduring this for another year, year and a half, is you're free. And chances are, when you hit that stage, it's the first time in your life that you'll actually feel free inside. It's still stressful. And it's hard. But now, you're being free. So, take what you will from this video. Again, thank you to the person who got me this coat. And there was a couple of um, like shirts that are gonna replace this for the bush. Um, like heavy cotton shirts for, for outdoor like work and stuff. Thank you to that person. Thank you to everyone for your support, whether it be in words or offers or anything. Everything's appreciated. Kind words go a long way. So, I just wanted to finish up. And I can't thank people enough. And there's going to be a lot more people out there in the world as this next year, year and a half, reaches its conclusion. There's going to be a lot more people in my situation. You just have to be strong. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share.